welcome back to daydreams of quilts on youtube today i'm going to show you how to make a teacher's apron the teachers are really needing these right now during the pandemic because they have to carry extra things with them like masks and hand sanitizer so there's pockets in the bottom of the apron and you can put a hand sanitizer bottle in there there's a key ring clip there's a little closed personal pocket and then there's a zipper pocket so if they need to secure something they can put it in behind the zipper so it's a really cute little apron and I will link to the free pattern in the description below so you can uh, download it and make your pattern pieces so let's get started we'll head to the link in the description and download your pattern pieces and you'll need to tape them together and cut out the main apron piece. I also went ahead and measured all the distances of the lines on the pattern just to make it easier to keep it straight when I was putting it together. And then I, you also need the flat piece. You're going to need a zipper and a swivel hook. And then uh, Shape Flex 101 interfacing. So the flat piece gets interfaced. Then there's, you're going to cut out a, a little fabric tab to hold the swivel hook. So you just press that in half and then fold the sides in to the center and press again. And then we're going to stitch down either side of that. There's a pocket piece for the snap pocket, a pocket piece for the zipper pocket, the main front pocket panel. And I interface only half of it, just to save interfacing, especially when I'm making a whole bunch of these. It's, it's helpful to save where you can, but if you want to interface the whole thing, you certainly can do that. And then press it in half. And then you need two main apron pieces. And I only interface one of those, but if you want to interface both, you can. But I found that interfacing both made the apron quite stiff. Um, and then you're going to need the strap pieces you're going to need to cut those so all the written instructions are on the blog at crafty craftystacyblog.com and i'll put the link in the description below so get all your pieces cut and interfaced and then we can start sewing um, the first piece that i'm going to sew is the strap that holds the keychain swivel hook so i'm just gonna sew down either side with the eighth of an inch seam. Okay, just like that. And then I'll just stick it through my swivel hook and then I'll just secure the tops together. And that's all we need to do with that for now until we're ready to put it on the apron. Next is the pocket flap. So we're going to fold it right sides together and I'm just going to clip it in place. And then we're just going to sew around the edge with a quarter inch seam, but we're going to leave an opening to turn it. Okay, and then if you want to clip the curves, you can, or you could just use pinking shears if you have them. And then just clip off these little corners here, but don't clip into the stitching. 
and then we're just going to turn it and push out those top corners. And the curve, push that out. Okay, now I'm just going to turn these edges in and head over to the ironing board and give this a little press. Okay, so it's pressed with those raw edges to the inside. Now this is a directional fabric, so I want this to be the top instead of the other side because then the writing would be upside down. But when you open the flap, the writing will be the right way up. So just be aware if you're using directional fabrics. Because then the next step, I'm going to put a snap in. And now I'm just going to top stitch around the edge. Okay, and that also closes up our our hole that we had from turning. So I am going to find the center of this now just by squeezing it and making a little wrinkle and then I'm going to take my awl and poke a hole right here and then I can add a snap the instructions say to um, make a buttonhole, but I don't want to do that. So I'm just using cam snaps. And I want to put, whoopsie. the male end of the cam snap on the flap. So that's this one. This one would be the female end. I don't really like describing them that way, but I guess it makes sense to everybody. So then we put the snap into our little press and give it a squeeze. And we have our snap installed on our flap. So we're ready to move on. Okay, and after you've interfaced and folded and pressed your front pocket flap, you're also going to want to top stitch that along the top edge. So I just did that as well. Um, I'm taking the piece that I have interfaced. If you are interfacing both of your apron pieces, then pick the one that you want to be on the front. And we're going to make the marks on the back side for our pocket openings. So I'm going to use a friction pen, but it doesn't really matter because it's on the back. You could use a pencil, but this erases with the heat of the iron. So just in case, I'm going to use this. So I'm lining up my ruler at two and a half inches because that's what I measured on the pattern piece how far down it was for the top line of the zipper opening. So I'm going to draw a line. And then I'm going to move my ruler over half an inch. So put the half inch line on the line that you just drew and draw another line. First line was not very good. I'm going to fix it. Okay, and then so the zipper is going to be when you're looking at the apron, it's going to be on the left side. So for the left side, we are two inches in. So now I'm going to mark a line at two inches. I believe it says 10 and a half in the instructions, but I kept having trouble that it wasn't matching up with my pocket piece. So I changed it to nine and a half is how long 
that zipper opening is. So I've got a nine and a half line right here. So I'm going to draw another line right here. Okay, and then the other side is one inch in. So I'm going to flip this around and put a one inch mark. And then six inches from that is the other side of the snap flat pocket. Okay, and then we're going to draw a quarter inch from that first line that we did. That, and then we're going to mark a half inch from this side and a half inch from this side. And we're going to draw a little triangle out to the corners. So if you've ever done like an interior zipper pocket on a purse or a bag, it's the same technique here. And then I'm going to do a half inch in on this side and a half inch in on this side of the zipper pocket. And again, draw that quarter inch line down the middle. So it's right in the middle of the other two lines. And then just draw a little triangle out to the corners. Okay, and our pockets are now marked on the apron. So I'll just hold this so you can see it better. Okay, so now we're going to get our pocket lining pieces and put them face, like right sides together with the front. And we just need to make sure that that pocket piece is Make sure the pocket piece is lining up with our lines that we've drawn here. Okay, so it's at least it's sticking out a little bit from this line, and same on this side. So we can pin this. I just want to also make sure it's about an inch above the line. It's a little bit high. So we're just going to pin that. Okay, and then the same with our other pocket piece. So we can just sort of line it up with the first piece and then make sure that it's covered, sticking out from our lines a little bit on either side of the opening. Okay, and pin that. Okay, so we have our pocket pieces right sides together with the front. They are lining up with our opening lines that we've drawn. So now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and stitch around these two rectangles here. And try to be very accurate with staying on your drawn lines. And then I'll show you what we do next after that. Okay, so we're using our regular stitch length of about two or 2.5. And I'm using polyester thread for this 
just because it's stronger. So just stitch right on the line that you drew and stop at that corner. Continue stopping at the corners and pivoting. Okay, that's the first one, then the next one. too far. Okay, so now you're going to need a seam ripper and we're going, this is the back side. We're going to create a little slit right on this little quarter inch in the middle line. Okay, just long enough to get your scissor blades through and same on this other side. this okay and I will grab my scissors so just put the blade of your scissors into that little slit that you made and cut to the end of your line but you're going to stop where we made that little half inch mark right there and then just cut to the corner right up to the stitching but not through it and same on the other side okay so do that for all of your your line so we'll go down to this side Okay, and then you're going to pull your pocket lining through from the front and get your seam all turned like this all the way around and then we're going to press it at the iron. So I'll get that done. Okay, so here are my openings. They're pressed, they're all on the back side now. So this one, we just need to top stitch around it because there's no zipper going in, this one on this side. But this side, we need to put in a zipper. So first I'm going to um, just go back and forth over this open end with my sewing machine, and then I'll pin it down. Okay, so I just stitched back and forth over the zipper end just to keep it even. Now I'm going to, there's little lines on the zipper and I kind of use those to follow to match up or to, to keep the um, edges here all straight along the zipper. I follow the little woven lines in the tape. Now I'm just gonna pin it. Some people prefer to use uh, double-sided tape. I think it's called Wonder Tape and it's a water-soluble double-sided tape. 
I find that the tape is expensive at about $7 a package, Canadian, and I sometimes it's easier for me, oops, my pin just broke. Sometimes it's easier for me and sometimes it isn't. So I just usually just, unless I'm really having trouble, I'll break out the tape. But I usually just pin everything. So we get this all pinned in place and then we just top stitch around the outside edge. Okay, so we're just gonna stitch around the edge and uh, I've moved the zipper head down here to get it out of the way. fabric in a little bit just poking out a little bit And then we just do the same thing. Well, first I'm gonna trim off the excess zipper. Oh. And then we're just gonna go around the pocket, the other pocket as well. So now we just need to turn our pockets up and clip them along the top, clip them to the part that's overhanging off the zipper. And then just flip it over and fold this top part of the front of the aprons down so that it's not going to get caught in the seam. And then we're just going to stitch these together. And I usually sew right along beside the that zipper seam so I can catch this extra little piece. that got turned under from the front and that helps to stabilize the pocket so it doesn't sag when it's full of things. OK, 
Okay, so I also just stitched right on, on top of that interfacing that was turned under from the front. But the this seam does not show on the front of the apron. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other pocket. These fabrics are also um, directional, so I put them on upside down so that when you look at the pocket from the front, once we folded this piece up, now the text is right side up. So again, if you're using directional fabrics, you wanna make sure that when you're finished, the fabric is going the right way up. If you don't get it right, it's not a big deal because it's inside the pocket, so. <laughs> Okay, so again, I caught that piece from the front just for a little bit of extra stability so that when you have stuff in here, your pocket doesn't sag down. Okay, and now we just have to do a quarter inch seam on each side. Of both pockets so I'll do that and then we'll move on to the front pocket before I move on to the front pocket I need to put my snap in so I've got these pockets all closed up on the back I'm just gonna fold this so that the two edges of the pocket are matching and make a little crease and then I'm gonna poke a hole just on the front of the pocket I will put another snap in. If you're doing a button, I guess you'd be sewing the button on this side. Okay, so there's the snap. And I'm just going to grab that flap and I'll snap it on and then I'll top stitch the top of the flap. So there's our snap pocket all done. So now we're just going to put that front pocket on. Okay, so our little loop goes right up here. And then this pocket goes on the front. And we're going to sew around the whole thing just to hold it in place first. And then we'll sew down the pocket seams to divide it into pockets. So I'll get that done and I'll come back here to mark the pockets. Okay, so to mark the pockets, I just lay this pattern piece on top of the apron and I just make a little mark where each line is going to go. I don't do the business card pocket for a teacher apron, but if this was a vendor apron, then I would put the business card pocket on. Okay, so I've got my little pen marks. So I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and stitch on each one of these. I'm actually going to stitch this way because I already basted it, so I don't want to get a pucker at the bottom, so I'm going to stitch this way. Okay, so just try to stay as straight as you can.
So there are all the front pockets. There's two pen pockets in the middle and then phone or hand sanitizer pockets or whatever other things you need to carry. Okay, so we're almost finished. So now I'm going to take the back side of the apron and lay it down on the front. And then I'm going to put my pattern piece on top and just cut these rounded corners. And then I'm just gonna clip it all together and sew all the way around this and leave the top edge open. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around the top, or the edge, sorry, and left the top open. And now I'm just gonna trim these rounded corners with the pinking shears, or you could just clip in, but not past the seam, obviously to uh, make it so they stretch around that curve. And then we just turn the apron right side out. And push out these seams. So now I'm just going to get this seam turned really nicely like this all the way around and then I'll top stitch around the whole edge with an eighth of an inch seam and then we just have to put the waistband on and we're done. Okay so here it is all top stitched and I'm just gonna make the waistband. Now, I don't do it the way it says in the blog post. I make it like quilt binding because I don't really want it to be that stretchy when you're pulling on the, the strings to tie it around on the back. So I'm just gonna layer a two and a half inch strip over another two and a half inch strip like this. And I'm gonna stitch across the diagonal and trim a quarter inch away from the seam and flip it out and press. So I'm gonna do that for both of these pieces and then I'm gonna make it just like how we made this where we folded it in half and pressed and then folded the two raw edges into the center and pressed. And that's how I'm gonna make the waistband and tie strap. Okay, so here is my tie strap. And I'm just gonna find the center of the strap by folding it in half. I'll just mark that with a clip. And then I'm gonna find the center of the apron. And I'll just line the center up, line the center of the strap with the center of the apron and clip it on. So I'm just sticking these two raw edges from that open top side up into the fold of the strap and then folding it back down so it's covering the front and the back evenly. And just clipping it in place. And then I'm just gonna stitch down all the way, an eighth of an inch, all the way along the edge. 
and then continue right off the edge of the apron all the way to the end of the strap where I'm gonna fold this under a quarter inch. And then I'll go around the corner and come all the way back up and go across the top edge. So I will do that and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, and there is our finished apron. So I just caught the other edge on the back. Oh, I missed a spot here. I'll have to go back over that. Anyway, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, thank you for sewing a teacher apron with me today. Hopefully you have a teacher you can give one to, or if you're like me, you might put them in your Etsy shop in case there's teachers looking to buy them. So uh, thanks for sewing with me, and don't forget to give me a like, a subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos from Daydreams of Quilts. Happy sewing!